Um, in this video, I'm going to show you how to find the derivative of f of z equals z to the n. As I said in example 2 where we looked at f of z equals z squared, a special case of this, um, finding the derivative here of z to the n using rectangular coordinates, which is by writing z equals x plus i y, is very cumbersome. So instead, we're going to uh, find the derivative of uh, z to the n using polar coordinates. Now the formula um, for finding f prime and polar coordinates uh, for z a complex number is written here on the right. And at some point I'll make a video showing you where this formula um, comes from. But for now we're just going to use it. Now to start, uh, since we're in polar coordinates, we're going to say that z is equal to r e to the i theta. Well then, that would mean that z to the n is equal to r e to the i theta all to the nth power, and that's going to be r to the n, and then e to the i n theta. Cool. And um, we can do a little bit better, which is, and we need to do a little bit better, which is write z to the n um, as that, but we know how to interpret e to the i n theta, namely e to the i n theta is cosine n theta plus i times sine n theta. So Using that, we can write the z to the n is r to the n times cosine n theta plus i times sine n theta. Cool. And then distributing the r to the n, we can write uh, furthermore that z to the n is r to the n cosine n theta plus i times r to the n sine n theta. And it suits us um, to look at this because now we see that we've written z to the n in the form um, u of r theta plus i times v of r theta. And that way we can find the partial there and the partial there, which we'll need to do. Um, cool. So since we no longer need this, just keep in mind that z is r to the, oh sorry, r times e to the i theta, you know that, but yeah, um, let's get rid of that and find the partials we need and get on um, with finding f prime. Okay, cool. So now since u of r theta is this and v of r theta is that, it'll mean that du dr from uh, your knowledge of partial derivatives from multivariable calculus du dr will have to equal n r to the n minus 1, ugh, n minus 1, cosine n theta. And then dv dr will have to equal, um, dv dr is going to be n r to the n minus 1, Jesus, made the same thing. Okay, anyway, sine n theta. Cool. So then f prime of z will have to equal e to the i e to the negative i theta, right? Right here. So e to the negative i theta times um, du dr. So that's n r to the n minus one uh, cosine n theta plus i times uh, dv dr, which is n r to the n minus 1 sine n theta. Cool. Now, uh, what we're going to do is um, factor, out, uh, factor out this guy and also push this inside of the parentheses. If we do both, then we've got the following, and I'll write in red. I don't know if, like, this color coding makes sense, but whatever. So it's n r to the n minus 1, right? Factoring out these two. And then I'll have to write, putting this inside the parentheses, e to the negative i theta. And then the rest of what we'll have will have to be cosine n theta plus i times sine n theta. But from what we've said before, what we've said already, and from what you know, this here, cosine n theta plus i times sine n theta, is e to the i n theta. So let's backtrack and write it as such. So we've got um, this times e to the 
i n theta cool but then now we've got n r to the n minus 1 and then this using exponent rules is going to be e to the um, i times n minus 1 times theta how nice because um, this here now is z to the n minus 1 so what we've got is n times z to the the power of z to the power of n minus one can't talk <laughs> sorry yeah anticlimactically um the derivative uh for z to the n works out the same way as x to the n yeah cool all right i hope you enjoyed this and keep watching take care